Senior Software Engineer in Ordo Rhino Labs. Today I'm going to talk about uh, a very esoteric problem which I am trying to solve uh, and I'm trying to solve it with mscripten. Uh, so this is the kind of the very fast over, but I will skip the demo because I don't want to <coughs> mess up the demo. <laughs> uh, but I will just define the problem, the need, the reason, the approach, design and the challenge. So the problem is uh, I am kind of helping uh, my friends in Barcelona, uh, they are developing this uh, speech-to-text model uh, for Catalan language, and they don't have too much resources, so they, they, they need some sort of uh, in-field usage for, for the model. Basically, uh, journalists will be the main consumer of the, of the product, and they need somehow, they need to run this, uh, this model, this very heavy model, into into their in their machines. Uh, so uh, they, the the idea that they come up with was to develop a desktop application. So I thought, yeah, I can do that, but I'm only one person. Uh, so I thought I could do it with uh, Electron. Uh, so as I said, uh, the need is to run the service locally because they don't they can't invest in a very heavy infrastructure that is available 24-7 and uh, it should be also runnable on uh, all major OSs so it just screams Electron uh, but there also just one volunteer that who, who is me uh, so yeah so uh, the reason that we are going with JavaScript and MScript is uh, one one reason is the JavaScript is very ubiquitous, so it can run on virtually any platform, and it has loads of goodies like uh, WebAssembly and WebRTC. Uh, so the journalists in the field will use it for transcribing audio, sorry, audio or video. Uh, so we can use WebRTC easily, uh, and with the help of WebAssembly, uh, MScript and now compiles into uh, something that can be run on uh, V8, uh, so this is also very nice. And on top of that, if you are developing uh, a U UI application, there are loads of frameworks that you can use, which is also another plus. Uh, so the underlying technology that they are using is CMU Sphinx, uh, which is written, which has a version called Packet Sphinx. It's optimized for um, mobile applications mobile uh, devices and it is written in C so the missing connection is that part C to WebAssembly and we are hoping that I'm going to solve it. Uh, so currently we are working on two possible approaches. Uh, both of them are uh, not dependent on any web ser service. One of them is to serve the static web application uh, and then run it on the browser for everyone. So one point would be just first loading and then the rest will be local. But then you run into problems like you don't have any file system access. And on top of that, you have to ask permissions to use microphone all the time and maybe a camera as well. And the second one that I am trying to go is to create an Electron app, which is basically a Chromium and Node put together. Uh, so Node is the backend sort of way so, sort of part that, that handles the file system stuff, and the Chromium is the all the UI goodies, uh, and you can hard code all the permissions as well, so you don't need to ask the user. And the design currently we chose was uh, right now uh, compile everything into WebAssembly with mscripten and wrap around. Uh, Pocket Sphinx, the compass Pocket Sphinx with JS because the, M the M scripting just provides you bindings, but you have to somehow make it uh, asynchronous and stuff. So on top of that, another wrapper. And so either create a service in the node, which will run that and then talk with the, the front end uh, or run everything in, in, in Chrome. Uh, and on top of that, 
these are the final bits, that these will be the final bits. Uh, create UI in Vue.js, hopefully. <laughs> Not in Ember, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> uh, and there is also another good stuff that comes with the JavaScript, is all transcribe. Someone has dedicated their, li their time to create the transcribing uh, tool that we need, so we just need to stick those two together. So the challenge remaining is everything. Uh, so <laughs> currently, uh, we are able to wrap CMU Sphinx library with M script and bindings because someone else has already did it, but it's not perfect. It's buggy. Uh, but good thing is CMU Sphinx has a uh, support for Swick and uh, Swick, if you haven't heard of it, is uh, produces this C++ code that wraps around V8, so it translates all the C++ code to V8 understandable code, so that you can import uh, within Node, you can import that code. I tried that, it works, but it turns out that it only compiles into platform dependent code, because in, in, in the background it all talks with the DLLs and SOs and all those dynamic libraries, so no, no. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there is no way to compile that Swig code into mscripten yet, so I either have to dedicate my time to, to create that part, uh, or I either have to write another C++ wrapper around the CMU things, like the original project that we are following uh, was doing. Uh, so another part is to wrap the WebAssembly code it's some sort of web worker because this is very heavy code. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to demo it, but when it runs, it just the, the laptop flies off. Uh, <laughs> so you can't run it in the, on the same thread as the UI. So you need to create another thread. And when it, you, you do that, you better use promises or some sort of React API. Otherwise, uh, you will be in a very bad time. Uh, so also, we need to decide on a suitable API, but once we get it running, I'm sure we will be doing that. Uh, but this part is almost done, so I created some sort of promise wrap library around the code that the, the original project did. Uh, but as I said, it's buggy, so it's not working perfectly. And yeah, in the, in the final step, it wrap WebAssembly and all translate into an Electron application. And the demo is not coming, so yeah, thank you. <laughs>